honorable chief guests, excellencies, distinguished guests. Just for the interest of the time, I'm avoiding the salutations, pardon me. Uh, before I get into the subject matter of FDI and logistics, I was just reflecting um, while looking at the logos. Then, you know, the Nordic chamber, of course, represent the Nordic countries. And in my school days, we used to have some of the geograph geography subjects. And uh, Norway used to be called as Nishit Shurjar Desh, Midnight Sun. So that was the very first exposure to the understanding of Nordic country. Then, of course, 25 years back, maybe, you know, just something like that. Uh, I used to have my very first uh, Nordic region friend, Ola Schippert, the CEO and managing director of Scan Cement. Now, they also conceived the what's the development journey for Bangladesh and how do we navigate? I think the brand is still there in the country. Then again, going back to the school or college days, Dano, uh, I think in, in terms of the powder milk that we used to consume comes from Arla, another Nordic brand. Then when the digitization happened, and of course the communication channel is happening, Telenor comes with a joint venture of Grameen. And here we are with uh, largest, one of the largest telecom company, Grameen Phone. Then of course, when I got into the banking career, international trade becomes a very, very important aspects of our operation. And uh, within 25 years of our operation in Bangladesh, uh, I think we, we, we claim ourselves sometimes the largest trade bank in the country. And when it comes to the cross border, the Marx line is something that we see every now and then. Another company from the Nordic region. Of course, as days goes by, we start having to take care of our health issues. Novo Nordisk, some of you are very much familiar. They make insulin, make our life better. Of course, we don't want you to have diabetic, but I'm sure that's the brand is touching our lives. And I'm sure at this moment, I was just speaking to the Excellency that they are now um, starting their manufacturing through one of the local companies and with the technology transfer here in Bangladesh in the very first one. So what else? Um, Max Line, Novodontix, uh, Arla. Yeah, I'll not be complete if I don't talk about H&M. The company, I think the largest uh, sourcing uh, from Bangladesh, that if, it is, if, if we talk about a single company um, taking the largest portion of the Bangladeshi governments, um, I think most likely this will be H&M. So, he, so these are the things that the, the Nordic companies are touching and enabling our business to thrive, economy to prosper, our life to take some of the advantage of the modern technology. And of course, in, in, in Bangladesh, these technological operations are happening. And let alone the Norwegian salmon that you sometimes cherish, both home and abroad. Coming back to the subject matter and, and Bangladesh, we talk about three major factors to our mind uh, institutionally, the domestic demand, and I'll not go into that data details today. Um, 170 million people, 50% below 25, GDP is growing, consumption is happening. Uh, and of course, the middle class uh, range would be another, you know, 40 million people and 2 million population are coming or adding to the, to the population of the middle class. Then the other, other, other part that we see then infrastructure development, both physical 
and also service industry. And lifestyle is changing. And of course, we know that in 25th June that we'll be having our Padma breeze, but let alone you can see the developments happening. But reflection in the pandemic is that our service logistics or service industry is probably a bit more, um, I would say that having the room for improvement than what it is today, uh, but that's also progressing. And the third thing that we see is the supply chain reconfiguration. Today, Bangladesh is in a strategic geographic area where any Asian growth actually will be taken advantage uh, by, by this country. Uh, at this moment, almost 25 to 30% of our export is non-EU, non-US, which was used to be almost 95% to US and EU. Today is 30% non-EU, non-US. If you look around within four hours of time, uh, journey time of air, air journey time, we can get to India, China, the biggest two economy. And the brand that we are talking about, they are also growing in Asia. So the, from a supply chain perspective, uh, we also reflect that within the last 10 years time, um, what happens is, is that the trade volume, and, and I was talking to the Honorable Minister in one of our functions, our Business Excellence Award, we highlighted that in 2010-11, our overall trade volume, both import and export, was something like 44 to $45 billion. To the last calendar year, of 2021, it posted almost 120. So it has tripled. So that will necessitate uh, the, the requirement of logistics. We know that today the Chittagong port probably is handling 3 million TIU and close to 4 million is gonna go. But is it good enough? What got us here will not take us there. And this is where we will require the global expertise. We will require collaboration. We will require technology transfer. And this is a country I'm, I'm sure that is set to grow, but it will require policy uh, formation. And I'm happy to, happy to see the policymakers are also here and wish that our uh, Honorable Senior Secretary uh, to the Prime Minister would be here, would have been here, but I'm, I, I understand he has got some state uh, emerge sort of uh, works. But these are the feedback that we have to you know, take back to the policymakers so that global expertise can come in, a, in an open mind and collaborate with wherever possible with the local players only to take it forward because logistics is a catalyst. Logistics is an enabler to the main industry that we are gonna, we're gonna grow with. Whether we talk about physical infrastructure today, the tipping point is that our kids and children are now word, or giving water because of their lifestyle whether it's delivery hero of the food panda, whether something that, you know, take uh, the, the container or others uh, very quickly from one place to another. I'll just end with one of the examples that I was, I was, I was looking at, I was watching of Jeff Bezos' interview, uh, that he was telling that many a time people think what is going to be changed, but sometimes he thinks about what is not going to be changed. Uh, and he mentioned two, one, that every time the consumers will ask for a lower price, so that demand will not going to be changed because price pressure will continue to happen. The other one is that they will not accept delayed delivery. They will accept, okay, today you give us the water, you expect the food panda to deliver within half an hour time. And that is probably an end-to-end -end situation and perspective of logistics that enhances experience. The logistic enhances your expectations. Logistic enhances your business dynamics. Logistics takes care of your time issue. Logistics takes care of your overall uh, business expectations, not only by the B2B scenario, but also by the B2C. Here we are, HSBC, having to operate in Bangladesh for last 25 years. We are celebrating our 25 years of operation with the largest bank in the Europe and catering to some of the countries that we are talking about. So of course, um, as we say, that the, the future would be opportunistic, but future there will be challenges. And I'll just end with one of my professor's quote, the challenges ahead of you are never greater than the forces behind you. We HSBC, and I'm sure the dignitaries here uh, would be forces behind Bangladesh's growth. And with that expectation, thanks for making a part of this event, making HSBC and myself a part of this event. Thank you.